Hello my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got another spoiler free book review to share with you guys. Um, it's been a couple days since I've posted. Over a week I think. I've been a little under the weather but we are back now and we got a spoiler free book review to share. Um, this book I picked up on a whim because I'd read two books previously by the author and I really loved them. And those books were The Best Day Ever, I think, and um, The Favorite Daughter. And those were by author Kira Rhoda. And so when I was scrolling on NetGalley, I saw this one under the palms, sort of read the blurb, and I was like, sounds interesting. I've liked her work before. Now, You've heard me say this exact sentence a few times in the past couple of months, and that is what I didn't realize before grabbing this book is that it's the second book in a series. And I feel like this has happened to me two, two or three times already in 2023. But um, for the most part, a lot of these books do stand alone on their own, you know. Now with this one, I will say that it does a decent job of like sort of catching you up. So if you're here watching this because you've read the first book, which is called Beneath the Surface, you're going to have no problems here. But if you're like me and you're just jumping into this one, it does catch you up a little bit, but I feel like I really would have benefited from reading the first book, obviously. And so I wouldn't have requested it if I had known un unless I'd read the first book, but here we are and I read it and I thought I'd share it with you in case you've either read her books in the past and are interested in reading more or you've read the first one which is a good idea or you're just interested so here we go basically what we have going on here is from what i can tell at the end of the first book so okay i'm getting ahead of myself we have a family picture succession if you've seen that show you know a billionaire family where there's the dad and then a bunch of siblings fighting over succession as the title would tell you so it's kind of in keeping in that sort of scenario. But at the end of the first book, instead of the company being passed on to one of the biological children, it's actually passed on to the daughter-in-law. So like the wife of one of the children. And as you can imagine, um, that caused quite an uproar. <laughs> So now when this book picks off, we're kind of picks up, we're kind of seeing her in that role and trying to, you know, she's got a lot to prove. The father of the family, Richard Kingsley, he's still alive. And then there's the two brothers, Ted and John, a daughter who's kind of not really interested in the business. She's off doing her own thing in Florida and they live in California. So it's going to be, there's going to be a weekend retreat for the business where things are going to be discussed with the board members and you know the dad wants everyone there to see what's going to come next for the company so he plans this huge weekend away well, not away because it's like in laguna beach which is also i guess in southern california so it's not very far from where they all live but at this like five star top of the line beach resort called i think the twin palms and there's a lot going on. <laughs> Everybody's kind of got their own agenda, much like in Succession. You know, there's just a lot of scheming and planning and plotting going on. And um, so yeah, they're there for this weekend and then everything starts to go wrong, right? Not just from inside the hotel, but even outside the hotel, the Santa Ana winds are blowing, which from what I can tell is a very like, um, energies are off when these winds are blowing through California. So that's going on. There's fires all around them. They're waiting to see if there's going to be any kind of evacuation notice during the week. And things are, things are going off the rails for everybody. There's a murder, maybe more than one. You'll have to read and see. Anyway, I enjoyed it. I'll probably give it a, I'll probably give it a, like a um, four stars. Um, cause I tried to rate it without I tried to keep my having not read the first book out of rating it, you know, I didn't want to dock at any points because I didn't know what was going on with something because I didn't read the first book. So 
I definitely get that, <laughs> that in mind while reading it. And um, I enjoyed it. My only one gripe, and the only reason I have this gripe with this book is because of the nature of this family. Like they are, you know, they're billionaires. They're terrible people. Not one of these people is a good person. None of them. <laughs> and they're all saying the most horrific things to each other. Like, and they're having inappropriate sexual relations with people they shouldn't be doing it with, you know, just all over the place. But none of them swear. <laughs> and in a regular book, that'd be like, whatever. But I feel like these people, these people would swear. And it wouldn't be so noticeable, except for there are exclamations. But it'll be like, what the heck? Or like, oh my goodness, or oh gosh. And every time there was, it took me out a little bit because <laughs> I was like, that is not that is not how these people would speak to one another. They're already saying terrible things, but they draw the line at, at swear words. I don't know. But again, like I said, if it was a regular story, I wouldn't really care. But these people, these people would be swinging around the F word like, like nothing else. <laughs> but other than that, like her other books, I found it to be an enjoyable read. It's a quick read, you know, I read it in a couple of days. And, um, yeah, if you like a good sort of domestic, rich people problems sort of book, bit of a thriller. I would call it a thriller. Maybe mystery? I don't know. I enjoyed it. <laughs> but I would definitely recommend reading the first book. I think you'd get more out of it. You'd know these characters more intimately. And maybe that's why I didn't like them. Or why I didn't like them as much as I did because I really knew nothing about them because I'm sure that's all set up in the first book. <laughs> but anyway, mark your calendars for May 21st if um, if you're interested. And uh, yeah, I look forward to reading what this author writes next, but maybe not immediately next. Well, maybe because I was gonna say that'll be book three. It definitely left off on like a there's more to come. We're not done with these Kingsleys yet. Um, so maybe I will check that one out. I was gonna say no because I haven't read the first one, but at this point I feel like I'm pretty well caught up. Anyway. <laughs> so that's pretty well gonna do it for me for today. Also, while I was under the weather, I read Once There Were Wolves, and I was gonna do a book talk on it, and I really did enjoy it, but instead I'm just gonna save it for the end of April wrap-up and just give it a more in-depth sort of section in that wrap-up. Um, just because I feel like where it's an older book and I read it so long ago at this point, even though it was only like a week ago, still it feels like I like to, if I'm doing a full book talk, I like to do it when it's fresh in my mind, you know? So that'll be in the wrap up. And I'm starting a, I found on Amazon and I've often looked for old Christopher Pike books. Like, I don't know if he's still publishing them, but I, I look for ones published in the nineties because I ate him up in the 90s, in the early 90s. And I found one published in 1990. And I'm sure I read it when I was a kid, but I'm going to read it again. And the video will be called like, reading Christopher Pike for the first time in 30 years. <laughs> or 25 years. Mm, 30 years? Mm. <laughs> okay, we're not going to talk about it. I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. That helps me out. I'll talk and I will see you again real soon. Bye.